forever loving till eternity. I see you. Can't you see what you're doing to me? The way you got me, baby, it's like I can't even breathe. You're all that I need. And I know nothing to do. Has me forget about you. You just came out of the blue. If you only knew. Let's see it now. Let's go to a restaurant, go to a fair, pick up some strawberries that may be the strawberry. Sometimes take a little moment in the sunshine. World stops spinning and I'm just fine. Right where I need to be. Put it in a Please welcome Shantanu Narayan. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Hello and welcome to Max. It's fantastic to see so many of you here in the Peacock Theater and the hundreds of thousands who are also joining us online. We absolutely love coming together as a creative community to share, to be energized, and to be inspired by each other's work. Our hearts go out to those who have lost loved ones in recent natural disasters, acts of terrors, and the devastation of war. I hope our collective power will use our shared humanity, creativity, and voice to help heal. As I think about the last few years, it's amazing to reflect on the increasing important role that creativity has played in our daily lives in helping us cope, come together, and engage with the world around us. Just think about the interactions we have with each other, how we work, how we're entertained. Our lives are becoming almost increasingly digital, and we're turning to creative differentiation to help us stand out as well as make choices. And people are creating more than ever before, flooding every surface, every channel, and every medium with their creativity. As consumers, we expect brands to be more culturally attuned and to interact with us in more meaningful and personalized ways. And so digital is transforming every aspect of our lives and how we engage with the world's information. Artificial intelligence is accelerating this shift and offers the promise and potential to make us even more creative, even more productive, and more successful. When I reflect on last year, I'm absolutely blown away by the amazing, amazing creativity that you have all brought to this world. With greater choice in media, there's more incredible content everywhere you look. From trailblazing shows and movies like The Bear, Succession, and everything everywhere all at once, to the short-term videos 
that are taking social media by storm, we've celebrated creative artistry around the world. Barbenheimer and Swifties also capture the moments of how we're all coming together. It's been a year of change, and as we embrace new tools and chart new territories, we're continually expanding our craft, elevating it, and each other. We're grateful for all that you have shared and all the ways in which you inspire us. At every Adobe Max, we look forward to sharing the hundreds of innovations that our teams have delivered. We're incredibly excited about the collaboration and the performance improvements in our flagship applications, as well as new features like enhanced speech and text-based editing in Premiere Pro, the new 3D workspace in After Effects, as well as the new Lightroom Mobile. But of course, this has been the year of AI, including for Adobe. Frankly, a number of the innovations that we're going to show you today were not even on the roadmap. They've been conceived, executed, and delivered on in partnership with thousands of you across our global community. We unveil Firefly, which directly integrates into the product workflows across creative, document, and experience cloud. And in the six months since launched, you have generated over three billion images with Firefly. The all-new Adobe Express, completely rewritten on a modern platform, delivers significant advantages in capabilities, collaboration, and speed. And the all-in-one editor makes creating tasks like social media content and images and editing PDF faster and easier than ever before. And all that new functionality is coming to a mobile device near you soon. We delivered new Acrobat and Express integrations, allowing users to create and share visually stunning PDF documents seamlessly within your creative process. With Adobe Firefly for Enterprise, we're empowering creative and marketing teams to now create and deploy all of this content. And most recently, we introduced Adobe Gen Studio, an all end-to-end -end solution integrating Creative Cloud, Express, Firefly, Frame.io, Adobe Experience Manager, as well as Workfront, to enable all businesses to supercharge and simplify their creation, all the way to activation and delivery process. And we can't wait to show you all of the incredible latest innovations over the next few hours. Since its founding, Adobe has always been focused on unleashing art with creators. We've democratized creativity. We've delivered power and precision and enabled more people to participate. We're excited to build on these advantages and to completely reimagine how we can leverage technology to deliver even more magic. Early on, we made the strategic decision to invest in creating core foundation models in the categories where we have deep domain expertise, like imaging, video, animation, vector, as well as 3D. We're committed to delivering the highest quality models in a thoughtful and responsible way, with transparency around the data on which they are trained and designed to be commercially safe. We're continuing to advance creativity for all, by making our products more powerful, accessible, and fun with the all-new Adobe Express, Firefly, as well as our mobile and web applications. But in parallel, we've really challenged the product teams to integrate our generative models seamlessly into the apps and experiences that you are using every day so that we can bring these new innovations to life. Generative fill, generative recolor, and a lot of the other product features that you're going to see today are a result of our Photoshop, Illustrator, Express, Firefly, Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Acrobat, InDesign, teams working tirelessly to deliver on this potential for every one of you. And you've come to expect that Adobe products now have power, precision, and control to serve your most exacting needs. Because we know that generative technology is not an end, but it's an ingredient in your creative process. It's an on-ramp. And so we're focusing on making sure that we integrate it directly into your workflows to fuel your creativity and deliver the power and precision that you expect from us. And we will continuously bring Firefly-powered features into more Creative Cloud, 
document cloud, and experience cloud, apps and workflows in unique ways. And all of these with content credentials now included by default ensure that transparency is provided around any generative use. I think as a product person at heart, every year I try to focus on one area of our portfolio where I see an immense opportunity to provide long-term benefits for you as customers and for Adobe. And we've leaned in this year into this unique ability to bring together content creation, production, workflow, collaboration, reporting, analytics, and insight into one integrated solution to address the entire content lifecycle for email campaigns or websites or marketing campaigns. And this became particularly important for us as we faced the creation of a mountain of content needed to launch what you will see, a record number of new products this summer. The Gen Studio that we announced is how we productized the approach that we were using within Adobe. And now everybody from a small and medium business to the largest enterprise in the world can accelerate the speed and effectiveness of this content creation all the way out to delivery process. Our mission is to change the world through personalized digital experiences. And we want to empower everyone anywhere to imagine, create, and deliver the best digital experiences. But together as a community, we have defined digital experiences for the past 40 years. And we're once again ushering in a new era of creativity and reshaping the landscape of artistic expression together with all of you creators at the center. And so whether you're a creative pro or a beginner, we're focused on giving you new playgrounds for exploration as well as ideation. We want to help you harness Adobe Magic as this creative co-pilot to unlock new forms of artistry as well as monetization. We're enabling closer collaboration so that our tools are seamlessly working together with the number of participants and stakeholders in your creative process. And we're doing it in the uniquely Adobe way, with accountability, responsibility, and transparency, so that we can harness the power of this technology for good of society. And while there's apprehension about the impact of AI, I firmly believe that it will never replace human ingenuity and it's an incredibly exciting time to tell your story. As you can see, our teams showcase the incredible innovations they're delivering, and we look forward to engaging with you at Max to continue to advance the state of creativity and to drive greater impact. Let's keep pushing the boundaries of our imagination together and create the future. And with that, have a great Max, and let me introduce you to your host, the president of our digital media business, David Wadwani. Thank you. All right. Photoshop. Uh, another image here from a photo shoot I did. Bring out the crop tool. Let's say I want to make this into a 16 by 9. Just accept the crop. Generate fill. What? What? Holy f Okay, well, my mind is blown. Oh, yeah. Ah, classic photo bomb stitch. Like this, magic button. It's literally perfect. You both look incredible. Okay, that is wild. Let's see how it performs. And just like that, that's clean. And then I thought, what about some floating shelves? Ha! And this thing is magic. <laughs> That's so good! Did I even mention that it's hella easy to use? Go to Generative Fill, describe what you want it to generate, give it a second. What? Do you hate editing these stray hairs out of your photographs? So we're gonna try Generative AI to remove these stray hairs. Thank you, AI, for doing the jobs I don't want to. This used to take me hours to do. So normally this would've taken me maybe like four hours, but Adobe did it for me in way less time. This is gonna make my workflow like 10 times faster. I am honestly so impressed. This is crazy. What is this? Boom. Photoshop? I'm impressed. Oh, look! <laughs> yes, 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 yes! Stop! It's got me!
Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome to Max. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Max has always been an opportunity to spend time together, getting up to speed on the latest in the creative world. And there's so much going on right now, especially with artificial intelligence. But just as importantly, it's a great opportunity to gather and get to know each other. You're here with 10,000 of the most creative people in the world. Spend time with each other, share what you're up to, and learn from the amazing talent around you. The creative world is transforming right now, and it's never been more important to hear from your peers. And that's why I love that opening video. It's a compilation of Photoshop creators from around the world when they first experienced the amazing magic of Firefly. Now, everyone was, and I hope you all were too, like kids in a candy store. You've been playful, combining emojis with text effects to, uh, in Adobe Express. You've been nostalgic, restoring some of the most important pictures in your life. And you've tested the possibilities by turning your living rooms into pirate ships, by compositing pictures of your kids with generative fill creations to produce some amazing high-impact digital paintings. And of course, our own very, very own Adobe Max team has also been having a lot of fun with Firefly. In fact, many of the images generated on the screen behind me today are actually done with Firefly. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Firefly, let me catch you up on uh, all of this. Uh, Firefly is a web app. Uh, it's a playground for exploring our AI-assisted content creation, things like text-to-image, generative fill, and text effects. But just as importantly, the underlying, what's underlying all this is our family of generative AI models. The models do all of the magic, like generating an image or adding things to or removing things from a scene. We released the first Firefly model for imaging in March. And it was built on four key things. First, it was optimized for native integration into our tools. Second, it was designed to be safe for commercial use. Third, it's built on assets we have rights to use. And fourth, it will support content credentials, including do not train tags, as part of our content authenticity initiative, which now has nearly 2,000 members. After introducing Firefly, the model, we integrated it into Photoshop, into Illustrator and Adobe Express. For example, Generative Fill in Photoshop lets you add something to an image as a new layer. It's aware of the full composition across all the individual layers, so it's able to match the lighting, the perspective, and the style that you're creating. And the best part is that this is all done non-destructively in its own layer. And we can tell we're onto something with Firefly. It's by far the fastest we've seen any technology we've released adopted by all of you. In fact, we announced just last month that Firefly had crossed 2 billion images generated. And as you heard Shantanu mention earlier, we're excited to share that today, a month later, it's already crossed 3 billion images and counting. You can clap. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you. We can chat later. Thanks for getting it started. Now, <laughs> in many ways, what's going on with AI in the creative world today reminds me of the early days of Photoshop. When Photoshop was first released in the early, uh, early 1800s, in the early <laughs> 1990s, our creative director, Russell Brown, who is here today, by the way, uh, uh, brought. Everyone loves Russell. Our creative director, Russell, uh, brought in artists like David Hockney, Nicholas Calloway, and Graham Nash to show it off and spark their imagination. What Hockney and the fellow artists that came 
did was nothing short of groundbreaking. They showed that true art could be digital, that digital exhibits now around the world have attracted millions of visitors to museums like the Met and the MoMA in New York, the Art Institute of Chicago, the de Young in San Francisco, which, by the way, featured Hockney himself, Victoria and Albert in London, Team Lab Borderless in Tokyo, just to name a few. Now, in fairness, not everyone shared Hockney's enthusiasm. A number of artists expressed concern about what Photoshop meant for art and for their careers. Similar questions are asked every single time art and technology intersect in new ways. French painter uh, Paul Delaroche saw his first photograph in the 1800s and famously declared that painting is dead. But what happens time and time again after those moments is actually quite the opposite. Artists like Cezanne, Cassette, Monet, O'Keeffe, Kahlo, and so many others came in after Delaroche and proved that pa painting is very much still alive. When Adobe revolutionized desktop publishing, we drove a huge increase in productivity. And the market responded with even stronger demand for Pro Calibre content. And where products like Premiere that significantly accelerated video production meets new consumption models like social video and streaming video, amazing things happen. In fact, production jobs in the video industry have grown more than 500% since 2006 and will continue to grow in the years ahead, despite the fact that video production tools are more powerful than ever before. Now today, some people are asking the same question about what generative AI means for them. And while none of us have a crystal ball, the reality is that AI isn't going away. But neither is the insatiable demand for content. Demand for content has doubled over the last two years, and it's expected to grow over 5x in the next two. And when you net it all out, we see a world where you'll be able to realize your vision with greater speed, greater agility, and greater precision, and a world where the industries that you work for need more creative professionals to keep up with the appetite for richer and more personalized content. And that's where Firefly comes in. We designed Firefly to be a tool in your tool chest, to enhance your experimentation, your ideation, and your exploration, and speed up your production workflows without compromising your control or pixel-perfect precision. You'll see this throughout all of the demos that you see this morning. And as you watch the demos today, keep the underlying technology that enables all of it in mind. As I mentioned, Firefly is a family of models. Our first, fam uh, first uh, Firefly model was the imaging model that we released in March. Our imaging model lets you generate and style images simply by typing in a prompt. Today, we're really excited to expand our models to include the Firefly vector model, giving you the power to create I can't wait to get off stage so you can see this demo. Uh, giving you the power to create, style, and edit vectors uh, using a text prompt. You're going to be blown away by this. And the Firefly design model, which gives you the ability to design templates from text prompts that you can edit and perfect in our applications. As you'll see, we've continued integrating all of this stuff natively into the tools that you know and love, so your creative ideas ultimately shine through. Uh, with that as background, like I said, you're in for a treat today. I'm going to hand it off to Ashley Still, who heads up our creative business, and Scott Belsky, who runs strategy and design for Adobe, to share some of the incredible innovation. Ashley's going to walk you through how Firefly is being integrated into our creative products like Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere. And then Scott's going to walk you through how Firefly plus Adobe Express can help you explore new media types and change the way you work with all of your stakeholders. Now, before I hand off, thank you for getting it started off with the applause. Applause is like a Scooby snack 
to the, all the incredible people working on, on everything going on that we're gonna show you today. So if you like something, let them know. And with that, please welcome Ashley Still. I am thrilled to be here with you all at Max. It is a new era of creativity. Breakthrough advancements in technology are reshaping the creative process and the tools that we use to express ideas, tell our stories, and realize our vision. At Adobe, we believe creativity is a uniquely human trait. And with Creative Cloud, we're unlocking the power of AI as a tool for you so you can focus on high-value creative work that makes a difference. This is what drives our product strategy and what you will see today, I promise, in just a few minutes. We are reimagining creative workflows by building Firefly models natively into our applications and services. With Firefly at the core of Creative Cloud, you can streamline tasks and break the boundaries of your imagination across every creative medium. There are four pillars to our approach to AI across Creative Cloud. First, creative work is fueled by exploration, iterating and developing the right idea to bring a message to life. But exploration is time consuming. It can take a week to explore just a few good ideas. With Firefly, we're working to make it faster for you to iterate and experiment with color, sketches, images, video, and more, so you can create your best work. Second, you're being asked to produce more content than ever before. This explosion of content production limits your time for creation. We are saving you time across Creative Cloud by eliminating mundane tasks like tedious selections and meticulous blending, increasing your productivity without limiting your creativity. Third, creative innovation is most magical in the hands of skilled creators who understand the how and why of editing choices to maximize impact. With Firefly features in Creative Cloud, you're in control, with no compromises to pixel-perfect results. Take generative fill. We integrated the Firefly image model into Photoshop's tools and compositing workflow, giving you precise control of selections, layers, and prompts to realize your vision. And last, but certainly not least, the creative community has always been our source of inspiration. We consider you part of our development team. We've shipped all Firefly-powered features in beta to ensure that you have direct input into what we're building. The passion that we're seeing is incredible. You downloaded the Photoshop beta app millions of times to try Jenner to fill. And what's even more exciting is how we're iterating together. A great example is outpainting or expanding an image. Early in the beta, you told us that outpainting was powerful, but not intuitive. So a month later, we launched Generative Expand, making expanding an image as easy as using the crop tool. In partnership with you, we have built so much innovation across our applications, and I can't wait to show it to you now. Let's get started with Photoshop. <laughs> 2023 has been a seminal year for Photoshop. We are blown away by the work that you create. In the 30 years since Photoshop launched, we've introduced thousands of innovations, punctuated by a few transformational inventions that have changed the way the world edits images. Layers, healing brush, content aware fill. Generative fill is the next transformational shift in Photoshop, 
It is already one of the most used features in Photoshop after five months. I'd like to welcome Anna McNaught. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to welcome Anna McNaught to share with you the power of Firefly and Photoshop in her artwork. Anna is an incredibly talented artist who is known for her amazing, fantastical work, as you can see behind me. Anna's gonna show you the power of the features in Photoshop, but more importantly, pay attention to how she uses AI to focus more time on her creative vision. Welcome, Anna. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, everyone. I am so excited to share with you some of the new features we've been working on in Photoshop, one of them being Generative Fill now out of beta. If you're like me, though, you've probably already been playing around with this all summer. I've been using Photoshop for 20 years, and I can honestly say that this is the most powerful tool to come to the application. I have a couple of examples I want to share today, and I'll kick us off with some of the fundamental uses of Generative Fill, a little adding and removing. I have this photo that I took during our travels, and I want to add a sand path here to direct your eye to the subject. So I'm just making a very rough selection with my nervous hands. And in the all new contextual taskbar, I have generative fill as well as some of these other tools that I use most often. Very great if you're new to Photoshop, this is super helpful. Click on generative fill and let's type sand path and generate. Now, Generative Fill is taking a look at my prompt and the pixels around my selection, the way I overlapped onto that sand beach to grab some of that texture. Oh, and there we go. Look at that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Three sand paths to choose from. You know, it's always so hard to choose. I don't know. That one's kind of funky. We got like an edge to that. I'll go with this last one. Notice those shadows in there. I mean, this would take a while to add from scratch. So. That's generative fill for adding. It is also a super powerful remove tool. So let's do that too. All right, making a selection over these bungalows, just like that, and grab these as well. And this time, I will leave the prompt blank to tell generative fill I want to remove. I want to make sure I don't have any of myself there. There we go. All right, and notice how I have these palm trees overlapping on these bungalows. If I were to try to clone stamp that out, I mean, we all know how much of a nightmare that would be. I'd have to paint all the water texture back in. I'd have to worry about, oh, look at this. This is so good. <laughs> oh, man, like, oh, so I, I couldn't have done that by hand. That is incredible. I think I have to go with that second one there. That looks really amazing. That's how easy it is to add and remove with generative fill, right? Anyone can do this. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> now I want to share with you how I, as an artist, use generative fill within my workflow. So I have a couple of images that I got from Adobe Stock. I love this forest, moss, rock, land going on, as well as these trees and the lighting. Now, I need to blend these two images together, and this is super simple, just making a rough selection here, and leave the prompt blank again, telling it I want to blend. Now, normally, I do this with a layer and a layer mask and, like, paint that in by hand. I find it super relaxing, you know. It's really fun, but we don't have time for that today, so we'll just let Generative Fill help us out a little bit. Oh, look at that blend. Gorgeous. Amazing. I love that one. That one is perfect. All right. Now I want to add a subject to the scene. So I got this cute little woodland fox, and I just need to remove the background. Well, right here, contextual taskbar. Again, that is my new best friend in Photoshop. We will just feather this out a little bit. All of those selection adjustments right there for you. You don't need to go hunting around Photoshop for this. Again, so, so handy. Now, we don't want our fox being all alone in the forest, so let's add a friend for him. And I want to add a butterfly right here, so just making a selection there. And in generative fill, we will type butterfly and generate. 
Now, your selections here are just as important as what you're putting into the prompt, so you can experiment with different shapes and sizes until you get your desired result. Okay, we got a cool black butterfly, Halloween vibe, super cool, love these. All right, I'm gonna go with this last one that's like a good classic butterfly, you can't go wrong, and I can definitely work with that. Now, I want to add a little bit of glow and light to this and help blend it in even more. A couple different ways that I could do that. I am going to use editable gradients now out of beta, just making a nice radial gradient here. I don't want it there, I want it there. And then just simply changing the blending mode to screen. Now, I can make this bigger or smaller, come in and change the color whenever I want. This is fully editable, no more swiping and deleting. I mean, that is awesome. <laughs> editable gradients, such a game changer. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is looking really good. I wanna just add something to the foreground here. I'm thinking I wanna put in a little bit of water, bring that up to the fox's feet. And in generative fill, let's type water with reflection. There we go. Now, if you created water from scratch, you know this is an extremely daunting task. If you know, you know you have to do a displacement map or liquefy and blend this all in. Oh, look at that reflection. It's so beautiful. Oh, that last one, though. Yes, yes. That is good. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, those like little ripples, so amazing. All right, now I love this. I wanna put it into my signature color palette. And normally I do that with a bunch of adjustment layers, adding these one by one, a little hue and saturation, little color balance, little curves. But I have to do this on every single image that I create, which takes me a ton of time. Well, now in Photoshop, we have adjustment presets, and these are so incredible. I can hover over these different options here that Photoshop gives me. Look at all of these. Great place to start if you're new to adjustment layers. This will kind of teach you how to get started. The real power here, though, is being able to add your own. And I'm excited to share in Photoshop beta, we have the ability to do that. So I added some of my own presets here. I got Magic 3, Magic 2, Magic 1. My naming convention is incredible, right? <laughs> so we'll just go with Magic 1. That's such a good classic. Okay, so look at that. We get a group with all of my standard adjustment layers added in for me. These are the ones I use on every image, and these are fully editable. So I can come in and just bring this up a little. It's looking a little bit dark, and I have a layer mask. So I can paint this light back in just like that, bringing that your eye back to our beautiful fox, light painting live on stage. Ah, adjustment presets, you all will love this. I love it, I'm obsessed with it, so incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm super happy with how this turned out. My work here is done, but there's just one more thing. I am sure we have all been in the situation where a client comes back to us and they want this to be landscape. <laughs> and you're like, I just spent all this time. Well, in this case, it wasn't that much time, but don't tell the client. <laughs> now I have to fill this in from scratch or worst case, start over. Well, no longer, thanks to Generative Expand, just click that button and it is taking a look at the layers and our water and the lighting and the fox and our adjustment preset, all these things. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh. I mean, that is awesome. It's, again, so tough to choose. I think I'll go with this first one. Wow, look at that water expanded. It kind of gives this cool painterly effect. That is true Adobe magic right there. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are some of the new features we've released in the past year in Photoshop and Photoshop beta available for you today, saving me so much time and energy so I can spend less time pushing pixels and more time creating art. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Anna, that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, Anna, you recently joined Adobe. What a way to start on the Mac stage. Thank that you. was awesome. <laughs> So obviously you've worked in Photoshop for a long time. Um, what surprised you the most working with Firefly and Generative Fill? It's been amazing to see how quickly I can visualize ideas and bring these to life. And you can see here from the sketches, this is a normal part of my process, but previously I was only able to take five or so of these ideas and especially working on a deadline and turn them into a final image. And throughout the keynote, we were trying to come up with the artwork for this. So with Firefly, I was able to visualize 50 plus of these ideas to show to the team and that was super powerful. That's amazing. You're able to generate 10 times the number of ideas as yeah. before. Um, so how has this changed how you work in Photoshop? Yeah, so previously uh, I would spend a lot of time on some of the tedious tasks, such as you saw in my demo, you know, I'd spend hours blending or trying to clone stamp or something. And now I'm creating more art than I ever have before, which is incredible to me because I can get these ideas out of my head onto paper, create them in Photoshop, and bring them into the world. That's amazing. Thank you again so much, Thank and welcome you. to Adobe. Thank you so much. Everything Anna showed is available today. David talked about our Firefly models. Both Generative Fill and Generative Expand are powered by Firefly image model that is deeply integrated into Photoshop. We've launched dozens of other new features in Photoshop this year, including the context bar that puts common tools, actions, and next steps right on the canvas where you're working. We also recently launched Photoshop on the web for quick access to the most common tools, including generative fill and generative expand, and the simplified user interface is great for those just getting started. This means Photoshop is now available across desktop, web, and iPad, and we're excited to continue to expand the Photoshop ecosystem. Again, all of this is available today, so have fun creating. All right, let's talk about photography. Lightroom continues to set, oh, yes, some photography fans in here, of course. Uh, Lightroom continues to set the industry standard for managing, editing, and sharing your moments that matter the most, bringing professional-grade capabilities to everyone. Lightroom isn't just for, for, for uh, photography professionals. If you take photographs, and I think that's all of us, Lightroom is for you. New AI-powered features like lens blur let you create stunning portrait effects with any photograph. An adoption of the Lightroom mobile app is absolutely exploding as millions of people discover the magic of Lightroom on a device that's always in our pockets. Now with the streamlined user interface and one tap presets, Lightroom mobile gives you everything that you need for photography on the go. Let's take a look at what's new in Lightroom. We've also shipped a ton of new features in Lightroom this year. Everything you see on the screen behind me, including the amazing new denoise, 
and editing in high dynamic range are available today. Just update your Lightroom desktop or mobile app to get started. All right, let's talk about Illustrator, the tool of choice for design. From branding and icons to packaging and web design, the world is full of art, fashion, brands, and marketing campaigns brought to life in Illustrator. We believe that generative AI holds the same power to ex expand ideation and help you work faster in Illustrator. In June, we launched generative recolor in beta, making exploring color palettes instantaneous with text prompts. In the beta period alone, you doubled your use of recolor. And what we heard from you is that you were starting with generative recolor to ideate and then refining manually. So we brought these two features together in a single panel to enable this brand new workflow. This is another great example of the power of natively integrating generative AI in Illustrator and building with the community. We are incredibly excited to build on this momentum with Firefly Vector Model. I'd like to welcome Daniel Morimoto to unveil the next major innovation in Illustrator. Welcome, Danielle. Thanks, Ashley. I am so stoked to be sharing some of the latest features that are coming to Illustrator. So I'm working on a brand design, and I'm creating this for a boba shop in collaboration with Lisa McCormick. Now, I have most of my designs already laid out, but I'm exploring a few different directions still. So I started off this entire project with this mini mood board. So I have a few different screenshots of some things that I was really inspired by. We have you know, some fun drawn characters, some hand-lettered fonts, and some more traditional fonts as well. So taking a look at this, again, this is just a screenshot, so there's absolutely no vector in this. I wanted to figure out exactly what font was used to create this word virtual. Now, in order to do this, I could bring this over to the web, or I could throw that in. Maybe I'll get a font or two back. I'll bring that in Illustrator. Maybe I have that font. Maybe I don't. I really just want Illustrator to tell me what font this is. And if I don't have it, recommend something similar. Well, that's exactly what the brand new retype feature does. So this just analyzed my photo and really quickly found the exact font and also recommend some similar suggestions. <laughs> Amazing, so I'll go ahead and I'll use this in my design right away. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this and it's really, really easy. But this is not all. What I really love is I have another font in mind that I used in a previous design. So I'm gonna head over to my CC libraries and here's this California text that I used. So I'm gonna head down to my type system and here's that California text. Let me just zoom in on that. But here's the problem. It's completely outlined and I worked on this project over a year ago so I don't remember exactly what font was used, but the great thing is with the retype feature, not only can I just quickly identify this text, but I can actually convert this back into editable text. Yes. <laughs> this is super, super cool. I, this was not editable two seconds ago, and now it is type again. So I love this. This is the brand new retype feature. It just makes it really easy when it comes to identifying and converting fonts. All right, so I have my type system. It's all built out. I have some hand lettering here, our cute little boba drinking bear over here. Uh, but I also have this flavor list we've been creating. So we have our matcha tea, our brown sugar, a lot of these different flavor of the weeks. And I still have one that I need to color here at the bottom. So let's take a look. Now, I could go in, right, click around, fuss with the colors, figure out exactly what yellows or oranges make up passion fruit mango, which, fun fact, I just saw passion fruit backstage for the very first time in real life. Uh, so I now know what color it is. But if I didn't, you know, I could use one of these existing tools. This is great if I know exactly what I'm looking for. But I just really want to explore, you know, a few different directions. So I'm going to use the brand new generative recolor. This is really powerful because I can describe a feeling, a mood, a theme that I really want to invoke for my color palette. In this case, we have our boba flavors. 
It's gonna put in passion fruit mango. There we go, I'll let that generate, and we'll take a look at a few of the different variations that we get back here. All right, there we go. Let's take a look at a few of these. All right, this one's all right. I like this one a little bit better, but again, it gets me part of the way there. It's not perfect, but it really is great because I can go into advanced options, I can edit this even further, and then when I love it, I'll save it as a new color group, and I can use it throughout the rest of my design. So really quickly, I can start to explore so many different directions for my work. All right. <laughs> this is powered by Adobe Firefly, and I wanna talk about how we're bringing generative AI into Illustrator. I mean, don't you wanna just be able to type something in like you can with text to image in Firefly or generative fill in Photoshop? Well, I'm excited to announce a brand new feature in beta today called text to vector. So let's take a look. Just like in Photoshop, I have my contextual bar, which I'm really familiar with, and I can create generations from here. With text to vector, I can create subjects, scenes, icons, and patterns. I'm gonna go ahead and just get started with creating an icon. I'll type in airplane and let that generate. Now, icons, very minimal objects. I have very simple lines here. Uh, we'll get that back, and again, I'll get a few variations. Wow, okay, just like that, I just got a few different versions of an airplane back. Let's take a look at a few of these variations. Eh, okay, eh, which one do I, I like this one, I like this one. The thing is, this is Illustrator, right? So this is completely vector. Yes, I can go in, I can tweak this even further. Let me just adjust this anchor point. Again, all of this is something that I can manipulate. That was a little much. I'll bring this down a little bit. And again, this is just a great starting place for me within my workflows. But let's be honest, that's a little simple. This is just an icon. Let's move on to something a bit more complex. So I wanna create a subject here. I'll go ahead and switch this over to subject. And I'll type in a tiger face minimal flat. Now again, not just describing a basic tiger, I add all these extra words to really beef up my prompt here. Minimal and flat, because I really want to describe that style. Wow, <laughs> unbelievable. So I have a few, again, variations, yes, <laughs> of this tiger. These are all so good. It's so hard to pick. Okay, well, I really like this one. Let's just take a really close look again fully vector, these lines are really clean, so this is a really great starting place for me within my workflows. Uh, but I do wanna explore you know, a few more directions for this tiger, so let's go back in. I'm gonna switch this to a colorful kawaii tiger. And just by changing you know, a few words, I really am looking for something a little cuter, a little bit more approachable. I added that kawaii word in there. Oh my god. <laughs> Adorable, this is perfect. Uh, I'll also open this up so I can look again at the panel and see all of my options here. Uh, I mean, the first one's pretty good. I don't know if we're gonna beat that. Pretty sure we are. I'm gonna stick with that one here. Uh, but in just a few seconds, right, I went from something like this to this. So I'm really just scratching the surface. <laughs> All right, well, we've done icons, we've done subjects. Let's move on to creating a full scene. Uh, so I'm just, uh, again, going to switch over to creating an entire scene here. And let's type in a warm desert with cacti. Now, for scenes, that's gonna fill out the entirety of my shape. Um, unlike subject, where I kind of got that transparent background, we see it loading over in the variations. All of that is coming through. Amazing, here we go, full, full landscapes really, really quickly. All right, I like this second one. <laughs> yeah, there are so many possibilities. You could type in like a fantastical forest, a beach, but this looks really good. But here's the thing. Sometimes I have my own artwork uh, that I'm creating and I really want this to match the style. So I have here on the right hand side a piece of artwork that I've created and it's really hard sometimes for me to put into words exactly how I would describe my own artwork to put that into a prompt. So the great thing is I don't have to do that. Instead I'm going to use the brand new style picker, select my own artwork, click generate, 
And what this is going to do is it's going to pull all of those colors that I've used. It's gonna look at my style. It's gonna add that to this generation, all of that prompt. We see that loading in. I'm gonna take a look at this with you. Yes, for the first time. <laughs> Amazing. This is so, so powerful. I love this one here. This tool is unbelievable. It is really, really amazing. <laughs> so not only that, I mean, I mean, one last thing, if that isn't enough, you can also create full patterns with this. I'm gonna move down, create a pattern, type in space planets, why not, it's my favorite. And of course, since this is Illustrator, you know it's going to be vector. We're going to get a repeatable pattern, something I can use, again, really quickly. Amazing, love this one. Even better. <laughs> I can go in, I can edit this even further. Let's look at this. Of course, it is fully vector. I can add, remove objects. Let's just delete a few of these here. And since this is repeatable, it just repeated that across my entire swatch. I am fully in control. This is unbelievable. This is the brand new text to vector. All right, <laughs> these are some of the amazing new features that are coming to Illustrator. There are really so many more, and I'm so excited for you all to start using them. Thank you. <laughs>Thank you so much, Danielle. text to vector is the first feature built on our brand new Firefly vector model. Our approach, as you saw, is to focus on quality and editability of vectors so it's easy for you to get started and generate ideas, whether you're creating a scene, a subject, an icon, or a pattern. To get started, all you need to do is download or update your Illustrator app. It includes the text to vector beta. We can't wait to see what you create. <laughs> text to vector is just one of the many features that we've shipped in Illustrator this year, including mock-up and the context bar. All of these features are available today, and I can't believe that there's more, but there's more. I'm also very excited to announce Illustrator on the web, now in beta. <laughs> Illustrator on the web is for those who want quick access to the most used to tools in Illustrator. And just like Photoshop on the web, it's great for people who are just getting started with a simplified user interface. It is also available today in beta for everyone who has Illustrator. All right, let's move on to video. Premiere Pro sets the bar for professional editors around the world, and it has been a truly remarkable year for Hollywood editors using Premiere Pro. The Academy Award Best Picture winner, Everything Everywhere All at Once, was cut in Premiere. And this is just one of 25 award-winning films so far this year that relied on Adobe's video tools as the core of their post-production workflows. Beyond Hollywood, video is eating the world and becoming the default for how we consume content online. From social content to marketing assets to animations, designers are increasingly being asked to create engaging video content. We've been working for years to achieve two goals, more advanced, precise editing for professional video editors that are also more intuitive for social video creators and designers. I'm really excited to welcome Dacia Science to show you the latest innovation in Premiere that puts power in the hands of pros and makes it easier for everyone to create videos. Welcome, Dacia. <laughs> Hi, 
Thanks, Ashley. I'm thrilled to be here with y'all to share some of the latest features in Premiere Pro that are saving me a ton of time. These new AI-powered tools in Premiere Pro are legitimately wow. Por ejemplo, I've been asked to add, edit several rough cuts today here live on stage of these amazing mural artists, and this is something I would never agree to. Why? Because that would entail me having to listen to all these interviews in real time, pull my favorite parts down on a timeline, rearrange the clips, you know, edit, and that would just simply be too time consuming. But the good news is Premiere Pro already auto transcribes all of my clips when I bring them into the project. We do this in 18 different languages. It's remarkably accurate, amazing. And now when we couple that with the new AI powered text-based editing tool, editing video is as easy as editing a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word Doc, take your pick. As promised, here are my clips, and check it out. Okay, I've got these words over here in this text panel. These are literally all of the words that were said in the clip. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's check it out. I'm Allison Human, and I am a visual artist. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so notice this nice blue pops as she talks. We can see visually what's going on, and I could listen to all of this, or, you know, I could just scroll down and read through all of this as easily as reading a book. It's amazing. And since this is essentially a text doc, I can also search for what I'm looking for. So what do I need on this timeline? I need to know who this is, what she's about. This is Allison Human. She's an amazing artist in the Bay Area. So notice right away, every time the word Allison is said, I've got a nice highlight in that text panel. And I've got a feeling that the last intro that she gave was probably the best one. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that and what happens next happens quick. So keep your eye on the timeline. Boom. Okay, that clip that I just highlighted is the clip in the timeline. But before I prove that to you, let me just throw a couple more clips in there. Why? Because uh, why not? Let's just show you how quick we can make something going. Okay, uh, let's put that down. Notice I'm just bouncing around. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the original clip. She said something about being a mother. Shout out to all the mothers out there. Okay, holding it down. That's what I'm talking about. All right, check it, check it. Oh my God, it's so hard to do the mouse when you're nervous, y'all. Okay, okay, check it out. We got some clips on the timeline. Let's take a listen. Designer behind the City Edition jerseys and the Women's Empowerment Month t-shirts. Women's Empowerment Month to me, is not just a buzzword. I'm a mother to two daughters, and I love being able to do things that they can see that. Woo! Y'all, those cuts are smooth, they're clean. I mean, my story is starting to take shape in just a matter of seconds. Text-based editing is really rethinking the way that we edit. Okay. But OVS, you know, editing is a little more complicated than throwing just a few clips down on a timeline. So I cheated, I mean prepared, and I made this nice timeline. And I don't know why this is playing. Hey guys in the back. Okay, cool, there we go. Y'all, I swear to God. Okay, my favorite thing. <laughs> My favorite thing about text-based editing is that it's also auto-transcribing my working sequence. So that means that like the things that, those rough cuts that I'm working on, you know, I also have a live doc. So I means I can start iterating, rearranging clips within the text panel with two simple commands that we all know, cut and paste. We all been cutting and pasting for years, y'all. We can do this, okay? So I got this clip here. Okay, y'all ready for this? Are y'all gonna help me out with this audio? Okay, so we're gonna play this clip. Let's check it out. Oh, no they're not. Surge, we have a problem. Okay, the Wi-Fi, I guess, is not working very well. Mm -hmm. Y'all, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We come back to this here. Let's try this part again. We got this beautiful clip of her saying wonderful things, and it's not quite where we want it to be. That's okay. All right, so check it out. There we are. There's where we want to be. All right, 
So let me move this over here. Let's try that again. We're gonna take the to boots off. Painting huge well, walls with spray paint. Um, that that really gave Thank me. Thank you. <laughs> Audio is a tricky guy. Okay, audio is hard, y'all. You're gonna find out about that later. All right, let's just start this clip again. Okay, where were we? Here we were. I want to rearrange some clips. I got this clip. Let's take a listen. It wasn't until I saw women that were doing what I wanted to do, painting huge walls with spray paint, um, that, that really gave me the push I needed to pursue a career in art myself. That's what I'm talking about, women helping women. Okay, amazing. Okay, so I think that should come a little sooner, like in the women's empowerment stuff that we were talking about. So check it out. I'm just gonna highlight this right now. I'm gonna hit the classic cut and then I'm gonna move up to where we were and I'm just gonna put this cursor down where I want that clip to land. And now with the little paste, boom, it's there. Magic. I didn't have to touch the toolbar. I didn't have to touch the timeline, y'all. Editing is so intuitive with text-based editing. It's really remarkable. It sounds better right there. You're just gonna have to trust me because I don't wanna do that again. <laughs> okay. All right, what else do we have to do as editors that is just so tedious? But we do this because we want y'all to sound so good, okay? We do this because we want y'all to sound good. I Take remember the first time when I painted a mural. Um, it really blew my mind. Uh, because you hear that those ums the us okay we call those filler words and they take forever we gotta listen to the sequence you might notice I got some markers down I gotta throw a marker down that's just to find it every time I hear one let alone cut it then mix it <sighs> what I really wish I could do is just like search for all those us and ums well as of today's beta check it out we have a new filler word filter y'all let the robots do the work. I'm tired of doing it. Look at this. Those are all the ums, okay? Let's just listen one more time where they were, and then I'm gonna two clicksies, and they're gonna be gone. Let's listen. So I remember the first time when I painted a mural. Um, it really blew my mind uh, because... Okay, and now check it. Delete, delete all, bye y'all. I don't wanna talk to y'all no more. All right, let's go back to that little clip, and let's listen. So I remember the first time when I painted a mural, it really blew my mind because... It really blew my mind, like it did. Like, it's called filler word removal, but they should call it like tedious time removal. Okay, that's incredible. Okay, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit back to audio, oh Lord. <laughs> I hope this isn't a sign of what's to come. Okay, audio, we're gonna be friends today. Audio is such a tedious beast, y'all. We are at the mercy of our elements so many times, and I was very much so when I filmed this interview. And this mosaic that's right behind us, where you see it, them working, uh, it's a gift. It's a gift. And when she started to talk about oh, Oh my gosh, there's so much going on in that clip. There's like wind, her voice is muffled. I think there was a band sound checking in the back, y'all, but like I had to film that interview at that moment, okay? So this is about the time I would start to panic, throw a bunch of effects on there, uh, start moving some dials around, and the reality is I'd probably have to ditch this interview because I'm not an audio engineer. I wouldn't be able to fix this, but check it also available in today's beta. I'm just gonna multi-clip, go into the essential sound panel. We have the new AI-powered enhanced speech. Let's click on that button. This is happening, it's already done. I can't even explain to you what it does on disc. I don't even understand it, so that's a good, I mean, that's good for me. Happened quick. So again, I'm gonna turn it off, and then we're gonna before and after real quick, okay? And this mosaic that's right behind us, where you see it, them working, uh, it's a gift, it's a gift. And when she started to talk about everything that we It is a gift, Sister Dolores. It's a gift of my time. It's a gift of saving our clips. This is so incredible. It's almost too good, though. It sounds like she recorded this with Ira Glass in an NPR studio. Okay, that ain't right. 
So check it, this is really nice. I've got this nice little slider. I can just bring back some of those natural sounds. I don't even have to rerun it again. And this mosaic that's right behind us where you see it, them working, uh, it's a gift. It's a gift. Yes, yes. It's awesome. It is a gift to all of us. Enhanced speech, y'all. I didn't even have to rerun it. Okay, enhanced speech, filler word removal, text-based editing, talk about wow. These are just some of the features in Premiere Pro that I'm so excited about. I can't wait for y'all to try. Come see me at the booth. I'll be there all week. Tell me about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dacia. Whether you're a seasoned pro or new to video editing, we're making the best end-to-end -end video app with faster ways to achieve the exact sound and look that you want all in a single app. As you saw, text-based editing is an entirely new way of working, making it easier to create rough cuts or full edits with dialogue. And this is just one of the many features we released this year. We've also worked closely with our pro video community and delivered over 50 workflow improvements that you asked for. Everything you saw is available today. And if you have Creative Cloud All Apps, you have Premiere Pro. Of course, working with video and any creative project requires close collaboration with partners, clients, and stakeholders. Frame.io is the leader in video collaboration with a web-based hub to share work in progress and track feedback for everyone involved. This year, we launched Frame.io for Creative Cloud with a native integration in Premiere Pro. And we added support for common creative file types like photos, design files, and PDFs so Frame.io is no longer just for video. Check it out for all of your creative projects. Wow. <laughs> it has been an unprecedented year of innovation across Firefly and Creative Cloud, and we are just getting started. We are advancing creative expression supercharging exploration and productivity, and lowering the barrier to work in new mediums. What you've seen on stage is just a fraction of everything we released today. In fact, we released over 100 new features and performance improvements across Creative Cloud today, from groundbreaking AI innovation to the fit and finish that matters to your work. With Firefly image, vector, and design models, we're reimagining the creative process and innovating faster than ever across Creative Cloud. And we are continuing to partner with the community to build together through betas, online engagement, and events. There is so much energy and commitment across Adobe to fulfill our mission of creativity for all by building the best tools for you and championing your work. Next, I'd like to hand it over to Scott Belsky. Thank you, and welcome, Scott. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ashley. So far, so good? All right? I mean, pretty blown away. Um, so I'm excited to be here to share the latest about Adobe Express, a product that brings together, all right, some fans in the house, a product that brings together some of the very best capabilities from across Adobe into an easy to use yet powerful and collaborative web application. So let me try and set the bit here. Imagine somehow that you discover some mysterious door in your house one day. Bear with me, maybe it's behind, the, you know, behind a stairwell or the back of a closet or behind a bookshelf or something like that. And then you open up this door and you discover this like, amazing new room that's spacious and beautiful and you know, all sorts of newfound uses come to your mind. There's just so much utility and you're like, wow, this door, I can't believe I finally opened it. Well, for all of you spending a lot of your time in Creative Cloud every day, 
we are convinced that this amazing new door to this new room is actually Adobe Express. And we want to open it today and show you a, bit of th a few things you may not have expected. With Express, we have simplified and integrated popular actions from Creative Cloud products, from Acrobat, and even from some of our marketing tools to outfit social media marketers, students, grandparents, yes, and even creative professionals like you to keep up with the demands on you and help you craft stories across any medium. And this year, we've brought the magic of Adobe Firefly to Express, so you can conjure up an image, you know, just by describing it, or make a unique text effect that looks like, I don't know, intertwined flowers or snaking railroad cars or whatever comes to mind. And everyone in this room has access to Express. But I know my audience. I'm in a room with creative professionals who are probably saying to themselves, you know, Express sounds great for other people, but I probably don't need this. Well, I think Express can actually really help you, and I'd love to just quickly explain why. I mean, first, creators today have to be capable of producing work that spans many media types. So even if you're a dedicated illustrator, you're going to have someone say to you, that's a great illustration, but can you add some motion to it? Or you'll be asked, can you make a version of that for TikTok or YouTube? Adobe Express makes all of this super easy. And you may be surprised by how much power we've actually now packed into this product. Second, your projects are, are increasingly collaborative. You're working with a team of other people, marketers, product managers, others. So Express actually makes working with your colleagues smooth and efficient and can save you from a lot of this annoying busy work and back and forth. Uh, and we're going to show you a bit about this in a moment. OK. So you've got some really cool stuff to cover. Let's start with how Adobe Express can expand what you're capable of and how you can take work that actually starts in Illustrator or Photoshop and then add motion, video, and other effects that take this work to the next level. Paul Tranny is here to show us how. Paul. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. Love seeing all my designer friends. I'm excited to show you Adobe Express. It's a web and mobile app for quickly and easily creating social content, banners, flyers, video, really all the things. And you could start with any of these professionally designed templates. But you're probably not going to do that, are you, you bougie designers? <laughs> no. You want to roll your own. I get it. I feel you. And you can, with Express. Take your content, drop it into Express, and really take it to another level. So while that is happening, let's take a look at this file happens to be an Illustrator graphic, a little boob on the beach. So today, my job is just beach. Usually, <laughs> do my designing. And really, I create on the desktop. I'll take a lot of this content, bring it into my Creative Cloud library. That's going to quickly become my brand library. It's going to help me get ahead. All right. Let's switch back over into Express and open up what we just saw in Illustrator. Everything comes in as expected. We could see our graphics. We could do some light editing. right? We could give a little border right here. And like I said, those colors, the brand colors in my brand library are right here. So you've defined these colors. They're a click away. It really helps. All right, I said take it to another level. What are we going to do? We're going to take this logo in the center and bring it to life with animation. So that's what we're going to do. A little bungee action, a little shrink, a little tumble. Not tumble. We're not doing tumble. I'm not a fan of it. You could do it. Make it pop. Oh, yeah. Clients are like, oh, make it pop. It's popping. Are you happy? <laughs> a little animation. Everyone's happy. And it gets to be really fun taking all this content and just bringing it to life. A little bob for the boat. That's fun. Let's go to the wave, too. We'll do a little bob. And we can control this and make it as, as chill or as crazy. <laughs> oh. Oh, too much? Too much. I'll calm down. Easy there. Everybody's getting seasick. Tone it down. Make it easy. Take this content. Duplicate it. Use your shortcut keys you're used to in your desktop apps. Everything works. We've got our layers over here. Make that look nice and seamless. Our star of the show, though, is our little boba truck. So yes, it has to be animated. There we go. A little skirt, skirt, doing this thing. <laughs> the sun, those sun rays. Let's feel the warmth. We could see that moving. So within a couple really quick moments, we've gone from a static Illustrator design to something animated that you could do. Not me. You could do this. 
Nobody has to know how easy it is, right? Let them think it's complex. All right, what has happened? Well, this animation is now a video. So you can see the content over here. And we have access to Adobe Stock right here as well. So photos, videos, you really just do a search for what you want. You can see all this footage, right? You're not gonna get a watermark or anything. You just find what you want. You can drop it into the timeline, start to use it. Take a look at that beautiful footage. Oh, very nice. Let's adjust the contrast. Thanks for laughing at my dumb jokes. And I'm adjusting it as if it's an image. It's a piece of cake for this one. I'll adjust the timeline, because this second scene is like my tag, right? So we need to drive home the branding. We need our logo. So where's our logo found? We can go into your stuff, into your brand. You can have as many brands as you want, campaigns. There's our logo. Click. You have it to find. It loads in. It's easy. Let's take our little bear. There's our little bear buddy right here. There you are, buddy. We got to include him. Look at him. He's looking pretty cool. Check this out. Little link icon. You see that? What does that mean? Well, that means we can jump into Illustrator or uh, Photoshop, whatever app it is. Open that up. Do any changes that we want. Make him look like a cool bear. Oh, yeah. There you go, buddy. Feeling pretty cool now? You're on stage. You're feeling good. Give it a second. Let's see. Wait for it. Uh, bear with me. There we are. I'll stop. Easy. I don't have to change, swap out files with anyone or anything like that. But we really have done a lot in a short amount of time. We'll do some light editing down here. Starting to feel like a video editor. Let's tighten that up a little bit. So in a couple moments, really designing, creating with your creative, adding animation and video. Super easy, hopefully empowering for you as a designer. Thank you very much. Okay, so you've, uh, you've showed everyone how Express plays well with creative products like Illustrator and others. Uh, and, but the reality is that you're going to make this and you're going to probably share it with some folks and you know, clients or social media marketers who are on all these different platforms and they're going to start coming to you and saying, I don't know, things like, uh, can you add a copy like, and change, it, change the date and make it horizontal? Make can the you logo format bigger. It? You know what I mean? Like, can you swap an image? Da, 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 da. Has it ever happened to you? Yeah, uh, once or twice. Well, <laughs> so, so how great would it be if you could all let your colleagues take care of a lot of this tedious stuff, but still be confident that they won't screw up your design and do anything off-brand? Yeah, all right. Uh, well, now you can. So Paul uh, is going to show us how, joined by Katrina Torrijos over here. <laughs> the famous Katrina. Uh, show us how. All right. Yeah, this is fun. So I just showed all these creative possibilities. And uh, what I like most is probably taking all this creative and locking it down. There we go. Lock it down. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with my stuff. OK, maybe you can change the text. But lock it down. Does that give you a lot of control freak? Yeah. Little control freak, that's OK. And from there, make this a template. Yeah, you didn't like templates a second ago, and now you do, I'm sure. <laughs> right? Because you made them. So every Friday, make sure you spell it correctly. Right in here, we'll switch to whatever campaign or project you're working on. You could save that template. So that's great for me. We could take a look back in our brand library with all of our colors and everything, everything you've defined, your logos, even your character styles, videos, as many templates as you want. You'll see all those templates right down there, and there it is popping up, spelled correctly and everything. Great for me. Going forward, week in, week out, change the text, do your thing, put your headphones on. But this is my favorite button right here, inviting others, offloading all the boring work to other people. Shh, can we do that? Giving it to other designers, uh, other people in marketing, other people that can take, I don't know, credit for my creative work, uh, <laughs> or really whoever's in charge of marketing, and that's Katrina. So on that note, I'd like to turn it over to Katrina. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> My name is Katrina, and I like to take credit for Paul's work. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But most importantly, I'm in charge of the marketing for our boba shop, and I'm working on an event this weekend, and Paul's template would be perfect to help me get the word out on social. 
Now, I love using shared templates in Adobe Express because it allows me to work with designers and collaborate with them easily because it's all synced to the library, and it opens up super easily in Adobe Express. Like, this was awesome. Okay, so I have Paul's template pulled up here, and it was super easy from here. It's easy to make edits, like we can move things around. Oh, just kidding. Oh, okay, can't move that. Cam, okay, Cam, okay, it's, it's giving control freak. Just, just a little, little bit, but you know, it's great because these locks also tell me that this is a locked template. It is brand approved. Paul doesn't want me messing with it, and I don't want to accidentally move something that I'm not supposed to, so we'll give Paul a pass today. It's okay. Um, but I can see that I am allowed to uh, edit the text, so I'm just going to go ahead and update the location from Santa Monica to Santa Cruz. And then I'm going to edit the timeline. And okay, Paul, I see you with the video. Okay, awesome, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to slide in a transition here, which by the way, is also brand new in Adobe Express. You can now add transitions in between your scenes. So things like dissolve or push or even slide with even more coming soon. So stay tuned for that. All right, so let's put in, oh, yep. Give it a moment. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so this looks pretty good. I love it. And so now I need to post this thing on social media. And oh my gosh, it is, it can be so time consuming and tedious for myself and my designer to have to recreate this thing manually. But this can be done easily in Adobe Express using their one-click resize tool. So you have, all you have to do is click resize. You can put in a custom size or select from any of these presets here. And trust me, there's a lot of presets. I think we got you covered. Okay, so for our project today, let's do a TikTok, um, stories, Facebook, um, let's do YouTube. Pinterest, I know we're getting, we're covering a lot of ground here, um, Instagram portrait and landscape. And then just hit duplicate and resize. And within moments, we have every single size we need. Oh my gosh, it looks, it looks so good. Uh, all right, so now that we have every single size that we need, it's time to actually share this thing to social now. So. Again, usually super tedious and manual work, having to go to every single platform individually. But it's 2023, y'all. We are not doing that today. And that is why I love Adobe Express's built-in content scheduler, because it is all right here. So all you have to do is select the channels, like let's do Facebook, Instagram, X. You can also schedule to Pinterest or LinkedIn. And now you can also directly publish to TikTok Instagram Reels, and Instagram Stories. Yeah. Woo. Oh, so cool, so cool. I know. That was my exact reaction, too. Um, OK, so from there, let's put in a caption. So let's do uh, come to our event in Santa Cruz. Oh my gosh, typing really is hard, okay. <laughs> um, and then let's set the date and then the time. And then you can also preview your post or save it as a draft, but because this is already on brand, I'm feeling pretty confident, so we're just gonna go ahead and full send it to the content calendar. So here is the content scheduler in Adobe Express, and it is such a powerful tool because all of your content is all in one place, and you still have complete control over your content. It's super easy to use. You can just click and drag, move things around. You can click into posts, make edits. I know, it's all right here. And then you can even draft ideas as well. It's, it's just, this is such an amazing tool. It's super powerful and it makes my job so easy. And I, from here, I'm pretty much done. And I, the best part is, I didn't even have to bother Paul for this, you know, mess up his skincare routine, wouldn't mess up his beauty sleep. <laughs> and it was all on brand, and this was all super done, or super easily done in Adobe Express. Back to you, Scott. Awesome, so it's pretty amazing. So in just a couple minutes, Paul transformed an Illustrator file to a locked template 
with motion and video. He shared it with Katrina, who was able to edit and make and, and use the guardrails that Paul set up, format the content for lots of different platforms and share it far and wide. You may have noticed one of her options was to post on TikTok, but we've partnered closely with TikTok and today Express is one of the first products to include direct posts to TikTok, which we're pretty excited about. Pretty cool. And, uh, and as you can see, Express is not just a creative application, but it's also a distribution engine as well. And there's far more coming soon to make that even more powerful. Express now reduces your busy work and empowers marketers and others to share and modify the content that you create without ever compromising the elusive creative control, right? We are always constantly adding new superpowers to Express, um, but this is important to us. We wanna maintain that creative control and that working relationship across all the folks that make media happen. A few other things coming that we wanna tell you about real quickly. From Character Animator, we've added the ability for you to make an animated character and have it speak with your voice. It's really cool. <laughs> From Adobe Acrobat, we've added the ability to edit and make PDFs and also spice them up a little bit, because sometimes they need that. We have added technology that allows you to remove the background from images and videos with just one click. And from Firefly, we have text effects, text to image, and starting today, generative fill in Express. Um, but that's not the end of the Firefly magic. Today, I am excited to announce a brand new Firefly feature that we call text to template which helps you generate literally any concept you may have in your mind's eye into an editable and unique poster, flyer, infographic, you name it. Katrina, show us the power of text to template. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I'm so excited to share text to template powered by Adobe Firefly. Now, it's exactly as the name says. You can literally generate a template just by typing in a prompt. So let's start off with something easy. Let's do a birthday party invitation, but not just any birthday party invitation. We're gonna do it for my best friend, Emma. So for Emma, yeah, okay. Cool, so now as it's generating, Adobe Firefly is generating images, choosing text, fonts, colors, writing copy, and just laying everything out into an editable template. Oh my gosh, look at this. We have amazing templates here, thank you. <laughs> and we have Emma's birthday, celebrate Emma's birthday. I love it, come celebrate with us. This is awesome, I love it, solid options. But I know what you're thinking, Katrina. Can't you just use the template library for this? And the answer is yes, okay? Yes, you can, because the template library is an amazing resource for you to help you get your project started. But let me throw a little curveball at you today, okay? All right. So Emma's a cat. Yeah, my best friend's a cat, and she's obsessed with space movies, okay? Because I love space movies, and she loves space movies, okay? It's a long story, it's a long story. If you wanna hear about it, come find me at the booth. Okay, so, <laughs> let's, let's do a new prompt, okay. And, okay, birthday party invitation for Emma, the cat. Cats in astronaut suits, floating in space, bright colors with cat buns. Now I dare y'all to try to find me a template for that. Exactly, you can't, I already tried. Don't, don't, even, don't even try. And oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my goodness, Emma would be so proud. But let's look at it, Meow Meowtastic birthday bash, perfectly stellar celebration, blast off. Look at these cats in the disco. We have a cat here with its uh, paws, see? Uh, I'm sorry, okay, um, so <laughs> we have some awesome templates here and I really like this one because the text is easy to read, this, the picture is front and center, it's, it's pretty solid, but you can also see variations in text to template, so now what it's doing, it is taking that template, creating similar layouts, colors, fonts, everything to get you closer to your perfect template and look at this, <laughs> oh my gosh, join Emma's Meowvelous birthday blast. Uh, Emma's cosmic celebration. 
Ugh, these are such good options. This one's giving us a little bit of a side eye. Okay, it's a little sassy. <laughs> and the balloons, oh my gosh, okay. I really, I really like this one, so let's go ahead and work with this one. Now, normally with Adobe Firefly, we're used to generating things where you have to change the prompt in order to change the result. But the cool thing about text -to template is that you don't have to do all that because it, is, because it is all layered and completely editable and just opens up in Adobe Express like this. I love it. And then from here, it's super easy to just move things around. Um, and then you can even change the colors if you want. And like, y'all get it. Like, I don't have to edit another thing. You all are Adobe Express pros by now. So yeah, Texas Template is such an amazing and powerful tool to help you get started on your project. Thank you. All right, y'all thought I was done. I got one more thing for you. So let's say Emma's birthday happened, okay? and all the cats from all over the world, all the different universes came through, okay? It was a really, really good party. So now, uh, Emma needs to send thank you cards, right? And the thing is, is that not every single cat speaks the same language. Well, I'm excited to also introduce Translate, now available in Adobe Express, and now you can translate your project into over 40 different languages with just a few clicks. <laughs> All right, so it's super easy to do this. Just hit translate. It automatically detects the language of your project and then just pop open this drop down menu and then you can choose from all of these different languages. So for today, let's do simplified Chinese. Um, let's do French, German. Um, Japanese, and then let's end it off with Spanish, okay. And then duplicate and translate, and within moments, our project is translated into all these languages. <laughs> I love it, okay, let's take a closer look at this. You know, you gotta check your work here, but just take a look, man. This, this is just powerful stuff. I'm so blown away by all of this. That was text to template and translate, now available in Adobe Express. Thank you. The world of memes will never be the same again. Uh, thank you, Katrina. Text to template, powered by the new Firefly design model, generating original templates based on your prompts and the new translate feature available now. Hope you guys uh, play with it. Um, text to template. Uh, let's see, so yeah, and also Express, remember, you all have this. I hope you, uh, hope you give all these new features a spin. So taking a step back for a minute, Paul and Katrina shared how Express helps link together creative and marketing teams to keep the content flowing in an organization. And this is a major theme that our teams are focusing on these days as the worlds of creativity and marketing come closer and closer together. Nothing could be more vital. I mean, content is the lifeblood of every brand, from a small business to the world's largest companies. They're only as relevant as their latest ad, video, or social post. And today, there are more stakeholders of a brand's stories than ever before. Product managers, social strategists, campaign leaders, CEOs, everyone wants to be involved. To seize the moment, businesses of every size need to reimagine the way that they tell stories so they can actually move at the speed of social. And this is bringing the worlds of creativity and marketing together in really exciting ways. I mean, if you think about it, there are really two tracks of marketing in any modern company. The first track is what we call macro marketing. Macro marketing produces those big campaigns, right? The ones that we plan well in events. And of course, it all starts with a brief that gets everyone, dozens or hundreds of people, on the same page. It requires getting feedback and approval from a broad array of stakeholders. And soon, generative AI will help you hyper-personalize content to appeal to each customer. And then the steady flow of data helps you actually optimize this campaign and learn about what your customers loved so you can improve the next campaign or piece of content. Macro marketing involves a lot of coordination, but its impact is profound. I mean, this is the stuff that helps establish a brand's identity and sets the tone for the rest of the company's marketing. Now, 
The other track is called agile marketing, and it is becoming more and more vital every day. If macro marketing runs on a calendar, agile marketing runs on a stopwatch. Your social team notices a meme or a viral moment and realizes that if they can act fast enough, they can inject their brand in a really fun and engaging way. And when people around your company are empowered to quickly leverage a template and easy to use creative tools and quickly generate variations of an asset using tools like generative AI, that is agile marketing. As marketing becomes more social, more real-time, and more personalized, agile marketing will increasingly distinguish every company's brand. And companies that can manage agile marketing successfully are going to become leaders in their industries. So your challenge, as storytelling becomes more real-time and social, is to maintain the integrity of macro marketing, the core iconic stuff that many of you create, while also developing the systems to iterate these stories and outfit others to edit and share them in real time. My bet is that nobody is better positioned than the creative team to help companies evolve with the times. So how does a team make sure their macro marketing and agile marketing efforts are connected? This is a challenge that most companies still struggle with. And as Paul and Katrina showed us, we're working really hard to help you solve it. Here are a few features coming soon that will help. We've added even more granular controls to that locked template and brand control stuff that Paul showed so that you can make sure that anyone in your organization is producing stuff that's still on brand, even if it's within seconds of a moment that happens. We're also embedding the versatility and quick editing capabilities of Express in Adobe Experience Manager, a product that actually many of your marketing colleagues already use. That way, people on your marketing team can open up an asset and a tool that they use every day and tweak the text or swap an image quickly and easily. We are also developing an AI assistant that will help you brainstorm text for a project. So you can tell the assistant about a headline or other copy, something you want to maybe test or A-B test, and it will actually suggest alternatives. And we're expanding the kinds of projects you can complete in Express. Soon you'll be able to use Express to create standout presentations, engaging infographics, and a lot more to come. And finally, the Express ecosystem is growing really fast, helping you work seamlessly across the many tools and clouds you use every day, from Google Drive and OneDrive to Dropbox and Wix and beyond. And we're really excited about the upcoming integration of Express in Microsoft's Copilot. That's going to be really cool. So stay tuned for more on that. So to sum it up, Express expands the kinds of creative work you can do and makes working with colleagues across your organization way easier without compromising your creative control. So you've got access to Express right now. I hope you'll check it out. And with that, I'm going to pass the baton back to David. David. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Ashley. I hope you guys enjoyed all that. As Ashley showed you, we're supercharging your creative cloud apps with Firefly. As Scott showed you uh, uh, how we're using Express to quickly transform your work for distribution and create easy workflows with all of your stakeholders. Now, for those of you in larger organizations, uh, I do want to call out Adobe Gen Studio. That's something that, that Shantanu talked about earlier today. Gen Studio lets you coordinate uh, content creation across all your stakeholders, uh, with Creative Cloud, with Express, with Firefly, and Adobe Experience Manager. It lets you manage all your workflows across all of them with Frame.io and Adobe Workfront. And it lets you uh, get end-to-end -end analytics and reporting with Adobe Analytics and manage the entire delivery and activation chain with Adobe jo Journey Optimizer. We launched Gen Studio just about a month ago, uh, but we already have major brands like Paramount and Prudential and Cisco and, of course, Adobe using it to drive agile marketing every single day. Now, for those of you in education, we want, we want to let you know that creative expression, as you already know, is an essential 21st century skill. Creative Cloud represents the best tools for the students that want the power and precision of our flagship applications. And Adobe Express represents the best option for students and educators looking for fast and easy ways to creatively express themselves. So with that in mind, we're thrilled to announce that we've partnered with Google. 
and their entire Chromebooks team to make sure that Photoshop Web and Express run beautifully on their devices. There's a Google employee right here, I think, or an educator. Uh, Photoshop Web uh, and Express are now available on the Chromebook Plus uh, for small and medium businesses, and Adobe Express will be installed on all new Chromebooks going forward. So if you're, <laughs> so if you're an educator, a student, a solopreneur, or anyone else that uses Chrome OS, we're excited that Photoshop, Express, and everything you've seen with Firefly is also available to you. All right, moving on. Anna sh shared earlier today that the Firefly image model is now powering generative fill and generative expand in Photoshop. Danielle shared how Firefly vector model will transform scene and logo and subject and pattern design in Illustrator. And Katrina showed how the Firefly design model is enabling text to template and express. We can't wait for you guys to go and use all of that stuff and get it in your hands today. But we do have one more thing, if you're interested. Are you interested? OK. All of these models that we've talked about uh, are our initial efforts. They're basically version one. They're amazing, but they're version one. And today, we're excited to announce a major step forward with Firefly Imaging, the all-new Image 2 model. This model is a huge step forward in two areas. First, the results are absolutely stunning. It's a whole new architecture that produces much more precise detail and 4x higher image resolution. And it's amazing in creating cinematic styles. Second, it gives you much more control, and it's a whole new way to guide image, the image that actually gets rendered to match what's in your head. I can talk about it. It's better to show it to you. So I'd like to invite up Kelly Hurlbert to walk you through all of this, the latest Image 2 model. Kelly? <laughs> Thank you, David. I'm so excited to introduce you to the Firefly Image 2 model, so let's jump right in. Now, I've already created this incredible panda sheriff that was using the prompt here at the bottom, and this quality is looking great, but we do want to make some tweaks, and I'm going to use some of the latest features to do that. So here in the side panel, we have all of the same controls from Firefly 1, so I could adjust the content type, maybe I'll adjust the aspect ratio, but now, Back by popular demand, we have the ability to exclude items from our image. We've also introduced photo settings. That lets you control the composition of your image as if you captured it with your own camera. In this case, I want to see a whole lot more of this desert scene, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a wide shot. I'm also going to remove some of this blur. And then finally, our engineers have been hard at work improving prompt coherence. That's how closely the generated image matches your original text prompt. So to show that off, let's just quickly move this panda from the left to the right. We'll click Generate. And so exclude from image, photo settings, prompt coherence. These are all designed to give you more control, make it easier for you to guide the generation, and make it easier for you to create the image as you've imagined it in your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this, we got a lot more of this desert scene, pandas on the right, cacti looking crispy. This is great. But of course, another huge aspect of generation is style. So we still have all of these style effects to get you started. And these are basically like keyword prompts to help you describe the style that you're going for. But sometimes words just aren't enough. Like it can be really difficult to capture the essence of a style in words. I don't know about you, I'm not like the Shakespeare of prompt engineering. What I'd love to do is just show Firefly exactly what I'm talking about, and now that's just what we can do. So from this gallery, we have a ton of reference images, again, to get you started, ranging from a whole bunch of styles, painting, you know, drawing, 3D. Let's go ahead and use one. We'll turn that down, that strength there. 
And now when we click generate, Firefly is actually going to do an analysis of this reference image. So it's identifying the style aspects, like the color, like the texture, like the other visual attributes, and applying that along with our text prompt to create a brand new image. <laughs> this looks just like the painting, you guys. <laughs> we got to try another one. Let's maybe try, let's do this 3D example here. And what's super cool is we can actually combine these reference images with the style effects. So we can mix and match words, images, create entirely new aesthetics. Really, the possibilities for sphere inventation here are limitless. <laughs> we got this adorable 3D panda. <laughs> And those results are super quick, right? So this makes it really easy to just experiment with style. You and I, we're professionals. I have my own personal style that I like to work with. What I'd really love to do is visualize my ideas in my own style. And that's where our next feature, Generative Match, comes in. So hopping over to the city image here as a kind of hobby photographer, I have a specific way that I like to edit my photos, and I want to apply that editing style to this scene. Now, I know generative match might sound like a dating app. This is not a tool for ghosting. <laughs> this tool lets me actually give Firefly a reference from my own work. So this is a photo that I shot and edited in Lightroom. When I upload that, Adobe is going to give, re give me a reminder of the user guidelines, the fact that I should be using my own work or work that I have permission to. It's also just going to do a quick scan, making sure there aren't any tags here that restrict the use of this image in AI. And now when we generate, Firefly is going to do that same style analysis, but this time it's doing it to my own work. So it's looking at the way that I edit photos, the colors I like to use, the lighting I like to use, and applying my style with the text prompt to generate this brand new city. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this looks a lot like my city, but of course we don't just have to do photographic styles, we can also do illustration as well. So again, we're going to skip over to my froggy friend here, and this time I'm going to upload uh, an example from my illustration work. So this is a cartoony little drawing that I worked on. Again, it's going to give me those warnings and that quick check. Really, what I love about this feature is the fact that I can you know, pre-visualize more of my illustration ideas so much more quickly than I could ever do manually. And the fact that this is using my own style means that these results are so usable. <laughs> Look at how cute they are. <laughs> it's definitely got that cartoony vibe. We got the outline shapes. We got the color palette. This is super cool. Like many of the Ugo, I don't just work in one style. I like to work in a whole range of styles. So let's try another example. This is a close-up from a poster that I worked on, some detailed line work here. This time, though, we are going to skip some of this generation side and just jump ahead cooking show style. So one, two, three, Adobe Kadabra. There we go. <laughs> This is really impressive. <laughs> Honestly, this is so addictive. I could just keep doing this all day long. Let's maybe try maybe a more physical example. Like, I don't know what would happen here if I tried pottery. Again, we're going to do this cooking show style. So if you want to say the magic word with me, you can. One, two, three, Adobe Kadabra. <laughs> These are so cute. <laughs> Cannot believe it's turning these frogs into little figurines. We even got the like speckle glaze on this. This is so much fun. <laughs> Honestly, I could just keep generating and generating, trying different reference examples, but I'm going to leave you with just one more. Uh, and just for kicks, let's try, I don't know, let's try this photo that I took in Spain. Honestly, random AF, but that's something that I love to do with generative match. Just combine two totally different things, see what happens. I love that Firefly gives me unexpected results, things that I might not necessarily think of myself, and I find that serendipity just so helpful to my brainstorming process. <laughs> so it's got kind of the building texture. We've even got roofing tiles on these mushrooms. <laughs> Firefly Image 2 Generative Match is so much fun. It's, I dare say, riveting, huh? <laughs> 
And I cannot wait to see what you all make. Back to you, David. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Uh, we're incri incredibly excited about the new model. Uh, the beta is available today in the Firefly web application. As you saw, the images are absolutely stunning. And the control you get, uh, the prompt suggestions, the, the photography settings, the exclusion list, the, the effects, and of course, generative match, just gives you much more control to tune and guide your creations. Now, before we wrap up today, I want to be clear that every demo you've seen this morning, all of them are available for you to go and use. These are not forward-looking demos. These are things that are available today. But I also want to be clear that we're just getting started. Adobe is going to have the best, most complete, and most natively integrated creative models in the world. And we have a lot planned for the months ahead. Of course, first and foremost, the Firefly Image 2 model is going to keep getting better and better week by week. But we're also introducing three new models in the months ahead. Firefly Audio Model, Firefly Video Model, and Firefly 3D Model. So I want to lift the curtain briefly on a few of these things so you can see what's coming soon. First, more and more creative control. Sketch Match is going to let you draw a rough outline of something you want to see in an image and guide the composition you generate. Scene Match is going to enable you to upload reference images and have Firefly analyze the composition, the depth, and the layout. And it combines all of that analysis with your text prompt to generate the structure you wanted. We're also adding more media types, like text to video, which is going to enable you to create a realistic and stylized video clip simply by typing in a text prompt, as well as image to video, which enables you to take a static image you generated and use that as a reference image to generate a video clip. And last but not least, we're going to empower you to easily train a private model extension or set of private model extensions for yourself, for yourself or your company, so that you can capture the style, the brand, or the content that you typically generate. So what gets generated is truly unique to you or your company. With all that said, thank you. With all that said, I joined Adobe 21 years ago, and I've attended almost every Mac since. The innovation we delivered today across our Firefly models, across the Firefly web application, across Creative Cloud applications like Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere and Lightroom, and of course, across Adobe Express, is by far the biggest set of announcements I can ever remember us making. And I hope it's also clear to you when you look at the plans for the months ahead, we aren't slowing down anytime soon. There's a lot of change right now in the creative world. Skyrocketing demand for digital content, new creative paradigms with AI, and new ways to distribute everything. And that means, and that makes this moment special, and that makes this conference special. It's a time to slow down and gather, so please take the next few days and make the best, best, most of your time. Share your thoughts with us. Tell us what you are looking forward to. Tell us things that we should be doing that maybe we're not thinking of. Learn from each other, and perhaps most importantly, think about what you're going to make with what we showed today. Sometimes I think about why we do what we do and the world tells us no. These walls were made to break and I am breaking through. At times it's hard to show. And I knew I was special. And when I didn't believe, I remember the moment when my family's waiting for me. Oh, cause I'm
We cannot be more excited to be here today with all of you. See you back here tomorrow morning. Have a great Max. And I knew I was special.